everyone, it's Nicole again, and I'm here to do a very belated July wrap-up. It is the 20th of August right now, and this is like the first chance I've gone to do it, because the first three weeks of August were crazy. Like, I was just so busy. I have really not read very much this month. But I'm finally here to do it. Sorry, my face is so pale. I look like a glowing moon. Um, but... I read a lot of books last month, so let's get into it. So I participated in two readathons last month. The Readathon, uh, the Canadian Readathon, and also Seven and Seven. And I did read seven books in Seven and Seven, and I have a vlog. That one, the Readathon vlog, it w was not working, but kept getting corrupted, so that one's not available. Um, but yeah, so in total I read 17 books last month, um, 11 of those were like actual books, and then 6 of those were graphic novels, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go through, most of them I don't have, most of them I got from my library, um, so yeah, we'll just put a picture for you. Um, but the first thing I read, this was for the readathon, the read a on. I really can't say that word. I don't know why. Um, but I read Man by Kim Thuey, and this feels like a million years ago that I read this, but it is a story of a Vietnamese woman who comes to Montreal and marries this man, or maybe she lived in Montreal, but she's a Vietnamese Canadian woman, and she marries this man who runs a restaurant, and she becomes a chef there. And it's mostly just like about her being a chef and then she kind of meets this other chef who lives in Paris and they have a little romance. It was so good. I really really liked her writing. Um, it was a really short book and each chapter was like one, one or two pages and the descriptions of food were so great. Like it made me want Vietnamese food so badly. Like everything sounded so delicious and she was a really good food writer and I think she actually used to have a restaurant and she was the chef uh, which I wish I could have gone there because she sounds like a great chef um, but I really want to read some of her other books as well because I think she's a really talented writer and I just want to read her read more of her describing food to me the next thing I read was This Accident of Being Lost by Leanne Betasomasoke Simpson and this is a collection of stories and songs. She is a First Nations Canadian like writer and also singer. Um, so there's a little album that goes along with the book, and I listened to that a little bit. Um, it was mostly like kind of like spoken word poetry, but like more more singing than like speaking. Um, I really liked this a lot. I really liked the short stories. They were pretty short, but I liked. They're very like just sort of a little glimpse into this person's life and they kind of um there were recurring characters throughout them and i liked the songs as well they were like well when you read lyrics it's kind of like a poem but they were my type of poem um kind of not too long like one page long free form uh emotional poetry i don't know it was it was my cup of tea and i liked it and she has another book um, that is more popular, I think, so I want to read that one next. And then the next thing I read for that readathon was a book I didn't even know was Canadian and it wasn't even on my TBR, and that was Young Francis by Hartley Lynn. Um, this is a graphic novel about a young woman in. I think she's in Toronto, I don't remember. Um, but she works at like, a law firm and she doesn't really like her job, but she's really good at it. And her friend really wants to be an actress and, like, move to Hollywood. And it's just about, like, a girl in her, like, mid-twenties living in the city trying to figure out what she wants to do. And it was very relatable. I am also a person in their mid-twenties trying to figure out what they're doing, living in a city. So, yeah. And I really liked his art style. Um, it's a very, like, simple, clean sort of style. Black and white. And the next thing I read was an audiobook, and that was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I enjoyed this. Uh, it is about a plague 
that happens and about all these people that kind of met the night the plague like really started going on and their lives during that event after and before um i feel like people always describe this book and they just talk about the part that's after because there's like a theater troupe that goes around performing shakespeare to this post-apocalyptic canada america but that was like not the whole book the book kind of followed a lot of other storylines um, and i wish people had explained it that way because i found it way more interesting like i hadn't i hadn't picked it up in a while because i was like well i don't really want to read about like a theater troupe but it was about way more than that um so i did like it um there was a part where there was a character who is disabled and it was not not a good representation and yeah I didn't like that part. Um, it's a bit of a spoiler, so I'm not going to talk about it here, but you can look into it if you want to. Alright, and the next thing I read for that readathon was Starlings by Joe Walton. This is a collection of short stories. There's also a play and then some poems at the end. And I liked some of the stories, not all of them. I definitely liked the longer ones a lot more. The shorter ones and the more sci-fi experimental ones didn't really work for me. I liked the play, um, but I did not like the poems. They were not for me. They were like rhyming poems, and I'm not really into that. Um, but yeah, this is my first Joe Walton, and I definitely want to read other of her books because she has like a lot of novels, so I want to read those. All right, and then the next thing I read, I don't think this was for a readathon. Um, that was Motor Crush Volume Two by Babs Tarr, Brendan Flesher, and Cameron Stewart. Um, this is a series about a woman, Domina Swift, who does like motor cross racing, like motorcycle racing. I, I know sports terms. Um, but there's some sort of like mysterious uh, element that they put into their bikes to make it go faster, but like she also uses that as asthma medication. And the end of the first book was a very interesting cliffhanger. And this just really elevated the series. Like, I was into it in the first one, but I wasn't sure if I was going to continue or, like, where it was going. But now I'm really, really intrigued, and I like where it's going. She's also queer. I don't know if she's, like, bisexual or lesbian or what she uses, but she has a girlfriend. So, um, but yeah, I'm really, really liking this, and we got to see some more, like, backstory of her and her dad and more about this mysterious element and there's some new characters so i think she is bisexual actually because i feel like there's some stuff going on with the guy but anyways i really like this series and you should check it out um it's got very very bright colors um it's very pretty so yeah all right and the next thing i read was a poetry collection called don't call us dead by Denez smith and this is a very uh, intense poetry collection uh, about like young black boys and kind of also like, queer black boys. And it was very, very intense. Um, and it was about like police violence and AIDS and just like the death of Black Boys was a very, very intense and emotional book, but it was really, really well written, and I highly recommend it, um, but it is very intense, so just be warned going into it that it's going to be an emotional read. Alright, and then the next thing I read was from the library, and that was Goldie Vance Volume 1 by Hope Larson. Um, this is kind of, uh, it's a 1950s comic about a young black girl who lives in Florida in her like family like works at a hotel um, but she also solves mysteries and like I love murder mysteries I mean there's not no one's getting murdered in here uh, but I like mysteries I love Nancy Drew growing up um, so I was really excited to read this one uh, but it got a bit silly at the end um, like I know it's like for kids but it just got a bit too silly and it was just very formulaic in each issue um yeah but 
I will keep my eye out on how people are feeling about the series. I mean, I might continue um, because I think it's a cool book, cool premise, but I don't know. It just wasn't for me. And then the next thing I read was uh, a romantic manga <laughs> called Bloom Into You by Nakatani Mio. I read the first volume of this. I forgot I had requested like a bunch of like gay manga and books and stuff from the library and then Rustine picked it up and it's got a pretty romantic looking cover and um, he was a bit embarrassed picking it up just because I mean I feel like most like lesbian manga is made for men. Um, I feel like this one is it's written by a woman I believe and I feel like it is for ladies but probably men read it a lot too. This was cute but I'm just not really into like high school stories and I feel like that's what a lot of the uh, lesbian manga is or the uh, yuri that's what it's called right yeah um, so if anyone has any recommendations for adult queer manga let me know because I want to read that um, yeah right. and then the next thing I read was another poetry collection I just got a bunch of poetry books from the library and I was just having a good time um, and this one was called For Your Own Good by Leah Horlick. This was a very hard one to, like, review because it's so personal. It's about this queer Canadian woman's uh, dealings with ha domestic abuse in her relationship. Um, I think she's also First Nations. Um, I think so, yeah and so was her partner so it was like a very intense topic um the poetry style wasn't exactly my cup of tea but it was so personal that like i feel like i couldn't really like take points off for that um but i'm glad this was a therapeutic opportunity for this writer and i do think she's a good poet so i would check out more of her work in the future and then the next thing i read was a book that like i kind of was reading like all month um, just because it's an intense one, and that's why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. This is by uh, Rennie Edo Lodge, and it's kind of about um, racism in the UK, which is something I don't really know that much about, and it was really interesting to read about their politics with racism because I feel like their stance is very much like, oh, that's not a problem we have, that's like an American thing. But they definitely have problems too and that's a pretty harmful way to view it so I feel like this was a really really informative book for me because I knew nothing about like British history it was interesting to learn like she didn't know much about the history of racism in Britain either like that wasn't something she learned in school like she learned about slavery in, in America like all the stuff I learned because I was like oh that's probably just because I'm American, but like she didn't learn that either, which was pretty upsetting. But yeah, I feel like this is a really important book. It was super informative. I kept like reading facts out to Christine because I was like, what? Did you know this happened? Uh, but yeah, really good one. I recommend it. Right. And then the next thing I read was another comic book. This was for the 7 and 7. Um, I think these next couple of books are, so I'm going to kind of go through them. Kind of more quickly because you can watch it in there um but i read moonstruck volume one i really liked this i was kind of hesitant going into it because um a lot of people just thought it was like okay and i felt like i was gonna feel the same way because this is kind of in the same vein as like goldie vance lumberjanes those sort of books that are geared towards more younger readers um but they have like diverse characters and i feel like for me a lot of times these ones just like don't quite work and like push it all the way for me but I really liked Moonstruck it was about this girl who's like a werewolf and she works in a cafe and she like becomes a werewolf like when she uh, her emotions get too like out of control and she's dating this like cute new lady who's also a werewolf and there's kind of like some magic going on they're kind of in this town where like creatures all live there and I thought it was really fun, and I definitely want to check out the next one. And the next thing I read was MXT by Cena Quiros, and this was a poetry collection. 
um, about grief, so another intense one. Um, I liked it. It was a bit too smart, like she was really wanted to let us know that she read poems and like look at all these references, but I did enjoy it. Uh, and then the next thing I read was a book I have with me, and that's Blood and Guts in High School by Kathy Acker. Um, this was a very interesting book. This is, this is from like 1984, and it's about this young girl who, like, lives with her dad slash boyfriend in Mexico, and she's like 10 years old. And then she goes to New York and, like, is in high school and then, like, in a gang. And then she gets taken by this, like, slave trader and becomes, like, a sex slave. And then goes to, like, Pangea. And it, it's, like, really crazy. Um, I... It was very hard to read because it's very gross. Uh, but I guess... I did kind of, I don't know if I can say I enjoyed it, but like I appreciated what it was doing in a way. Um, I feel like there were some like, all of the Middle Eastern characters were like evil, like everyone was bad in this book, but they were like especially evil, and I thought that was like, you didn't really need to do that. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in checking this out, I would check it. If you like gross, disturbing books. Um, and there's a lot of unique formatting in here, which I, which I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, this is a weird one. <laughs> and then, oh, the next thing I forgot to grab with me, but that's okay. Um, the next thing I read was The Language of Dying by Sarah Pinborough. I really, really enjoyed this. I was kind of worried about reading it because it seemed like it was going to be very sad. Because it was about this woman whose dad is dying and, like, all of the siblings get together to kind of reconnect and be with him before he dies. But there's also this kind of weird magical realism element going on. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was a really short book. It was just barely 100 pages, um, but I really liked her writing, and I thought it was just a really interesting little book, and I want to read more of her books. And then the next thing I read was Deadly Class, Volume 6. This is the right one. I can't really talk about the plot of this because it's the sixth volume, but I really love Deadly Class. It's about an assassin high school. So it's about the, the drama of high school, but also assassins. And this one is probably my favorite one since volume four, which was like a very, very intense book. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. There's like a bunch of new characters that I'm enjoying. And if you're interested in checking this out, you should. All right, and then I think the last thing I read, I read on like the very last day of the month, and it was actually for the book Tubathon, um, but I finished it, so. Well, included in the July one because why not? Um, but that was Rubik by Elizabeth Tan. I got this at the LA Festival of the Books. Um, it's from Unnamed Press and I got this one and a couple others and I really liked this a lot. Like this might be my favorite book of the year. It's either this or Her Bar Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, this is a novel, but it's told in a bunch of short stories that are all connected, and uh, it was so good. I don't really know how to talk about it because there was so much going on and you didn't really know, like, what was happening at the beginning, and, like, even the back doesn't really have a description of the plot, but it revolves around technology. It's, like, a good like, when Black Mirror was actually good, but because now it's, like, gone a little silly. But, like, a good Black Mirror, but for, like, millennials. And so good. I loved it. And I kind of want to do, like, a full review of it. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how that would work. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens and, like, unfolds. And it was really enjoyable to read that. Um, and I wouldn't want to give anything away. But I feel like I can figure something out. So. Um, but yeah, those are the 17 books that I read this month. That sounds like a crazy number, but I did read like six comics, so. Um, I did read a bunch of single issue comics too, but I'm not going to talk about this here. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Sorry this has been so late. Um, I'm going to film my July favorites too. 
and I should have a book haul coming up soon because I've gotten a, like way too many books this month. So, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.